channel a little bit about everything. Today is uh, the day after Remembrance Day, the 12th of November. It is... Oh. Six fifty in the evening, and uh, I bought a book the other day uh, when I first got, or I should say, when I first got this lathe, I bought a book on gear cutting, and it would it's been lying around for a while now, and um, I finally got around to looking at the material inside, and there was a gear cutter tool in there and they nicknamed it the Eureka. Well it's really a continuous form relieving tool or it provides this action continuous form relieving and that permits you to make gear cutters and the, uh, the regular gear cutters that you're going to see look something like this and they use them on the Kearney and Trekker machines. Um, lots of videos out there about people cutting gears and they use this form of cutter. Now, normally there are, there are eight cutters per set. And they range from eight diametrical pitch to 30. 30 would be a special case, I suppose. And uh, you can cut them odd, like 9, 11, 13 if you want. But what you're mostly going to see out there is 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20 is a very popular size. Uh, 22, 24, 24, and so forth. Okay. Um, I saw a video the other day, a guy was making a gear and he didn't have a cutter for it. And he bought one. And it cost him 80 bucks. 80 dollars. And I found this a little bit expensive because if you're cutting a one of, you gotta charge a customer 80 bucks. Is the customer gonna say that's too much? You know? So, I started looking at this one thinking to myself, well, if I need my own cutters, you know, so I'm going to try to make this tool. And uh, first, uh, if you look at the geometry of the cutter, if you don't have a relief angle, it's going to rub it and cause excessive wear and it may not cut at all. No. But you got to provide a relief angle. See, from here to here. You got to provide a, a relief angle so it can cut properly. And um, if you look at it from the side, or, or uh, if you flip the gear over, on, on, on the side, yes, this is the profile you get. Well, the profile is here, right? If this cuts the blank, these are hardened steel, uh, 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 tool steel, okay? That, that's your, your blank from the side, and then you cut your, your gears, your, your teeth, here, okay, well you got to provide this relief angle and this tool, if the gear comes in and like this and oscillates or wobbles off the uh, central axis, it's going to provide this relief angle. And um, this tool will provide that action, okay. Uh, this is and these cutters uh, cut involute gears, right? Um, they could cut helical gears, but if you're not on the CNC and you need a special attachment at the end of your mill to 
to actually have a twist as you, you, you're cutting into it, you gotta have a twist to it to get your helical angle. Um, so, um, this is for uh, uh, in the loop gears. And this is a picture of the the involute uh, form with the cutter actually digging it up. Now looking at it from the side. Um, I'm gonna uh, start making this. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to make this tool. I hope I succeed. Um, as you can tell the dates changed so there's a few days in between the last time my introduction and what I'm doing now um, this is the mandrel for the Eureka tool okay um, this portion from here to here is an inch from here to here, it's one and from uh, there, it's one and three quarters. And from here to here, uh, here to here, it is one and one and a half. Okay, one and three quarters, one and a half. And from there to there, it's one inch. From there to there, it's um, almost five eighths of an inch. It's a six twenty, and from uh, the thread portion is um, I have three eighths, but the thread is five sixteen and forty threads per inch. I'm setting the offset on the Eureka Mandrel to be 310 thou. Okay. And the reason I say 310, if the top of that right there is center of this piece here, then all I need to do is offset it by um, half half of that okay and it is 620 so that's 310 310 offset 310 thou offset well you can tell I just started skimming off the uh, offset I actually this outer diameter is 175 so what I had to do and I hope it works I took that 175 measured off my page I measured off my page um, uh, from the center, from the side here to the center before the offset of this. Uh, this is a one five, and that's one seventy five. But from the one seventy five to the center, point eight eight two. And on the page where the drawing was, um, the 175 was actually 1.4555. Okay, so I scaled it up to real life dimensions. My blank is a 1.743, almost 175. So what you do is a cross multiplication, and I came up with this value. 1.56 thou. So over here, my my 
I measured from here 156 thou then took my center finder off a drill chuck and scribed it and, and then put a center drill in there a number four and the number four normally is for one inch diameters I wasn't sure what to put in there but it is a one inch diameter so it does need a number four but on the other end it's only uh, three eighths so it takes a number two and that's the end that does all the work over here so I don't know I'm just going by what the book says and um, yeah the good book machinery handbook 29 This is the best I can do in chucking this, right? I can't machine it between centers because it is 30 thou off to one side. So that's the relief that you're going to have behind your cutter 30 thou. That's the thrill it's going to. It might end up 60, I'm not sure, it might double. Um, yeah, because if, if you look at that, if, if, if that was, if that little pin mark there was right bang center, you wouldn't have any throw. But since it's 30 to that side, Yeah, it's going to throw off 30. So that 30 is going to be the relief angle. Um, the cutters. Um, I'm going to have to take it slow. I'm extended more than one third. Or at... Uh, for every inch chuck you can go out three right but I won't be able to take hogging cuts because it, it, it might throw it off so I'm gonna and I'm gonna slow down the, the speed to maybe if I get a vibration at 400 plus it, it's an interrupted cut huh well, let's get started. So, I gotta find out 
I got five sixteenths I gotta leave. So I'm gonna give myself thirty thou of um, I'm gonna overshoot it by thirty so I have thirty thou to skim it down once the majority of the uh, material has been removed. So uh, five sixteenths is two fifty. 3175, I think. Oops. a little bit later. Finally got through the wobble of the offset. I'm thinking it continues cut now. At 30 pounds cut, it doesn't go fast. 